following program contains content and language that some viewers may find instructive. Viewer attention is advised. Hi, this is Bridge with Stephen from the Lake Chapala Duplicate Bridge Club, and today we're going to begin the first of four parts on the topic of hand evaluation. We're going to be considering high card points, length points, and shortness points, and uh, we're going to define valuation points and then look at the point requirements for various uh, uh, games and slams. So let's begin with uh, what is our purpose, what is our goal when we sit down to the bridge table? What are we trying to do? We're trying to communicate with our partner and we're trying to reach an optimal contract. And to do that, we need to know what the, the strengths and weaknesses of our combined hands are and what they can do together. So we're, we're bidding and uh, we're trying to uh, uh, convey information to our partner. Um, we have to make the decision whether to bid or pass or double in some cases and whether um, our hand is good enough to open. If it is good enough to open, should we open it at the two level or the one level? Or maybe perhaps um, uh, when I say two level, I was referring to weak tooth, but maybe it's a strong tooth love hand. Um, uh, if right hand opponent is open, um, do we have a hand that's appropriate for over calling? Do we have the strength? And again, we need a way to measure the strength of our hand so that we can make these decisions. Do we have enough strength to respond to partner's opening bid? And if so, which bid? First, we're going to consider where do tricks come from? Well, unless it gets trumped, the highest card in the suit is uh, going to win a trick. And high cards, aces, kings, and, and on down the line, um, are measured with what are called high card points. Um, we also get tricks with the last cards in the suit. If, if everybody else has run out of that suit, um, we can continue taking tricks with the little cards. And for that, we um, award ourselves length points. We also um, manufacture tricks by trumping and dummy. And we call um, uh, shortness points or dummy points um, by, by those names. Um, when I say trumping a dummy, I want to emphasize to you that what I mean by dummy is the hand with the shorter piece of trump. So if we're in a 5-3 fit and there's a three card um, trump suit in dummy, even if it's in hand, it doesn't matter. If we can trump with one of those three, we will manufacture a sixth trick, um, assuming we can take the other five. Uh, we'll look at an example of that in a moment. And of course, finessing is where tricks come from, but that has nothing to do with hand evaluation. Now let's begin with high card points. This is the system we've all been taught. Aces are worth four, kings are worth three, queens are worth two, jacks are worth one, and tens are generally not assigned any value at all. Um, British theorists and experts um, through the decades have instructed us that this isn't really reflective of the relative strengths of those cards. This card is not exactly twice as strong as this card, even though this, card gets, uh, this ace gets four points and the queen gets two points. So there are modified versions of this 4-3-2-1 system uh, that we wanted to spend a moment looking at. We're not going to actually use them. They're too cumbersome. Here's one that um, awards an ace 4.3. It's a little bit more than the four that um, the old Gordon system uh, assigns. Kings are a little bit stronger than the three here, too. They're 3.1. But queens fall below 2 to 1.8. Jacks fall below 1 to 0 0.8. And tens are awarded um, almost a half a point, 0 0.4. So by this reckoning, some, somebody thinks this is the relative strength of these, um, of these uh, cards. Now, obviously, we can't use those kind of numbers at the table. Because um, if we assign these kind of points to our hands, um, we'd have to do things like, say, one no trump. Uh, instead of 15 to 17, that shows 15.3 to 17.8. Um, that's just not reasonable. Here's another. Um, uh, way of looking at the relative strengths of these cards. Give the ace six, the king four, the queen two, the jack one, and the ten zero. Notice in this uh, formulation, the king is worth double the queen, whereas in this one, the ace is worth double the queen. Which of those is more accurate? Well, I think you're going to have to choose yourself. Um, in the end, we're going to go back to this system, but we're going to make modifications. Um, to account for these differences. And here's just one more that I found somewhere. 6.5, 4.5, 2.5, 1, and 0. Now here are some of those modifications. Because aces and kings, which are sometimes called primary honors, are undervalued in the 4, 3, 2, 1 system, they really are worth a little bit more than 4 and 3. Um, hands that are aceless, don't have an ace in them, should, you, we should de deduct a point for that. If our hand, if the strength of our hand is mostly in kings, queens, and jacks, especially queens and jacks, um, that hand's just not as good as if it had aces and kings for the same number of points. So for acelessness, let's deduct a point. 
Let's also give ourselves an extra point for the trump queen. If queens are worth two, the trump queen is going to be worth three. That's a queen that's always useful. Okay, um, let's say spades is our trump suit. Who knows what the queen of diamonds will do for us or the queen of clubs, but we do know the queen of spades will be a valuable card. And we're not going to count that queen the same as the other queens. We're going to give ourselves an extra point for the trump queen. And then finally, we should probably give ourselves a half a point for tens. If your hand is rich in tens, um, it's a better hand than one that isn't. Okay, so that's hard, hard card points. Now let's look at length points. Um, we give ourselves an extra point for the fifth card in a suit. We'll add one for that. If we have a six card suit, we'll add two. And if we have a seven card suit, we'll add three. Now the other side of that is this flat hand. Um, we want to deduct a point for that. This hand has no roughing value and no running suits. So it's just not as good as a hand with a five or six card suit in it, or a hand with a one or a two card suit in it. We're also going to give ourselves an extra point for the ninth trump and one more for um, each one thereafter. So if we have a 5-4 fit like this, partners open to, um, a heart with this suit, and you have four of them, give yourself an extra point for that ninth trump. Um, the reason for that is that a lot of things become possible when you have a nine um, card trump suit that aren't as easy or aren't possible at all than an eight card trump suit. For example, it's not unusual with a nine card trump suit to um, pull trump and have one or two trump um, still left in dummy when you're done. Uh, that makes certain kinds of end plays possible and um, opens up other um, avenues of possibility. And one uh, last thing to say about this idea, um, two suitors are undervalued in this system here. Um, if we give ourselves an extra point for a five card suit and two extra point for a six card suit, we're going to give ourselves one extra point for each of these five card suits and two extra points for, each, for this six card suit. But they're not equal. A five, five, two, one hand has uh, better shape than 6322. So this is one place where the um, point count system uh, might not accurately re reflect the relative strength of hands. Now we're going to cons consider shortness points, which are sometimes also called dummy points. And we're going to give ourselves um, one point for a two card suit, a doubleton, three points for a one card suit, and five points for a void, a zero card suit, but only once the fit has been found. Obviously a void in partner suit is not so good, and uh, uh, a void in no trumps not so good. So let's ask ourselves for a moment, how helpful are voids? Well, we talked about um, voids and dummy. This is the suit I was um, thinking of when, when I was discussing that. This suit will produce five tricks. Ace, king, queen, jack, ten. And I'll follow three times with, under the ace, king, queen, and then take the jack, ten. If I can trump with one of these cards, I'll get a sixth suit, a sixth trick in that suit. If I have to trump with one of these cards, that doesn't increase my trick count. I won't get a sixth trick if I have to trump with one of these, only if I can trump with one of these. So short suits in dummy are very valuable. They produce tricks. But the short suits can also be liabilities. Consider this hand. Let's call this spades. This is declarer here with king, queen, jack, ten, fifth of spades, opposite eight, seven, six. And he's got the singleton ace to of his left and um, four small to his right. Now, let's say th these are spades again and left-hand opponent has opened the bidding with three hearts. And we're voiding hearts. Okay, is that going to be a good thing for us? Well, in a sense it is. We can stop the hearts, but the opening lead will be a heart probably, and we'll have to rough. Now we're down to four trump. Now if we go to try to pull trump, um, our left-hand opponent's going to get back in with the ace, and we'll probably lead another heart. At that point, we've roughed twice, and we're down to three trump in this hand, three trump in this hand, We've lost control of the trump suit in a sense. Um, our right hand opponent actually has more trump than we do now. In that case, the void was a little bit of a liability. It would have been much better to win that opening lead with the ace of hearts if we had it. Um, in no trump, as I mentioned, uh, voids are, are never a help. How can they be? Um, you can't possibly win a trick with a void in no trump. Now let's look at a few other situations um, where shorteners might be a liability rather than an asset. Suppose you have a suit that's queen doubleton. That queen might not be as valuable as a queen um, that's uh, protected, the queen third, or a singleton king. Um, those cards, what are, what are their values? Um, is a singleton king better than a singleton three? Yes, it is. But how much better? That depends. Um, if a partner doesn't have either the ace or the queen, it's no better. Okay, um, suppose um, you hold king x and partner holds the singleton ace, and the clara leaves low in that suit. Do you have the nerve not seeing the ace? to not go up with your king. Well, if you do go up with your king, 
partner has a singleton here. Partner's shortness is a liability. Um, your shortness actually is a liability too, because if you had a third card in that suit, you would have easily ducked. But if you go up with this king, it's going to be covered by partner's ace. So you've got a little bit of a problem here. And here's another place where there might be a slight problem with shortness. I have a singleton ace here opposite king, queen, jack, 10, 2. Not a huge problem, but if I want to run this suit, I'm going to have to get from this hand to this hand in another suit. Had I had a small card here, I could have led the ace and then small to the king, queen, jack and run the suit. And I have a similar problem here. Suppose I put down a singleton ace and dummy, and I'm holding this um, in hand. Well, the opponents can see um, you're not going to be able to uh, convince anybody to put their king up to cover your queen if you lead it, because um, they can see your singleton ace. That becomes a liability for you, and they just simply duck you and your ace, and they get their king. Okay, so those are places where shortness points um, might not, or shortness might not be an asset. I wanted to define another term for you here, valuation points. This is going to be the sum of the high card points and the distribution points, whether those be the long length points or the shortness points. Um, you've probably heard that we generally, when we're evaluating a hand, until we find a fit, we don't count shortness points. We only count length points and high card points. So our initial bidding will, the valuation points will be the high card points and the dis distribution points will be the length points. Once we find a fit, we can switch over to the shortness points and give ourselves the one point for uh, uh, the doubleton, three points for the singleton, etc. And then the last thing we're going to talk about here is the, um, the point requirements for various um, levels of contracts, these mostly represent relatively balanced hands. When hands have um, a lot of shape, long suits and short suits, um, these numbers kind of go um, out the window a little bit. But for the typical hand, um, Dave and the Major, we like to have 26 valuation points um, and uh, 29 valuation points for game in, in a minor, whereas in no trump, about 25 is usually um, um, adequate. For a small slam, we want 33 uh, valuation points if it's in a suit, 33 high card points if it's in no trump, and for grand slam, 37 and 37. Uh, these numbers probably derive from the idea that um, if you hold 33 high card points, you can't be missing two aces. So um, small slam at least has a chance. And here we're 37 high card points, um, and this should say high card points here. Um, we can't be missing even one ace. So um, that's it for today.